thank you, Katrina, and thank you everybody for your feedback. Um, let me pull up my presentation here. I will be giving um, a short overview, the last um, in this series of morning talks here. From the NHGRI perspective, particular to CSER. So we've now heard high-level um, NHGRI priorities as well as priorities from NHGRI's Division of Genomic Medicine and the sequencing program from Eric, uh, Terry, and Carolyn. You've also heard from C about CSER from the perspective of the investigators from Katrina's talk. So my talk today will focus on CSER from the program office perspective, the history of the program and how we'd like input from all of you today about thinking, thinking about future opportunities in this area. So to understand CSER's future, I think we first need to look at its past. Uh, first, some history then. CSER arose from two RFAs, an initial one in 2010 and, and a reissue in 2012. We refer to these, um, as Katrina mentioned, as the U Awards. From the outset, the RFAs were framed in the context of clinical care, so recruiting patients as they entered the clinical workflow. We anticipated a number of challenges and opportunities to become evident in generating genomic sequence data in the clinical workflow, interpreting the data for the physician and patient, and um, whether and how to communicate results to patients, and in some cases, their family members. And overarching to this entire RFA was a focus on the ethical, legal, and psychosocial implications. So built in the RFA was this required three project structure, project one focusing on the recruitment um, and in return of results in the context of a clinical genomic study. Project two, the sequencing analysis and interpretation of sequencing data. And then project three, the LC component that I mentioned to you before. So each site was required to address these, and um, what we did was we wanted to build in a comprehensiveness of the clinical workflow and of the pipeline, and emphasize within the RFA the opportunities to generate, analyze, and cross-pollinate data and ideas both within and across sites. So you'll note that along the spectrum that there are opportunities to involve multiple perspective, first of all the patients, second um, of all the physicians, and then third, um, a focus on lab and um, clinics. And so you'll see that within these individual aspects, there are a number of scientific questions to be addressed. But just to take a step back, there are opportunities for research and implementation along these interfaces. For example, the physician-patient interaction, the lab-physician interaction, just to name a few. And to take a step further back, because all of the U awards are doing this, I forgot my animation. Um, all the awards are doing this. We can identify best practices and lessons learned among the consortium that we, will, we hope will be beneficial to the entire field. Because this broad um, focus um, mirrored that of the ClinSeq program in our intramural division, we um, integrated and um, are fortunate to have the collaboration of our colleagues in the ClinSeq program. So if you've heard, as you've heard, CSER also includes an R award component. In 2011, NHGRI funded a set of grants addressing LC issues related to the return of results. Although the RFA focused on returning research results, over time the investigators have had a much broader impact in the discussion of LC issues related to clinical sequencing. They've done this by generating empirical evidence, both qualitative and quantitative, analyzing normative considerations, analyzing legal and regulatory issues, all with the aim of ensuring that any recommendations made regarding clinical sequencing are evidence-based as well as legally and ethically sound. And I want to note that the R awards began, our award grantees began meeting with the Project 3 U award grantees from the very beginning, the rationale being that um, we would have more opportunities for collaboration and working group papers. In 2013, the existing R awards were formally merged with the CSER consortium, but because they were initiated prior to this, as of today at least, the, the R award funding has ended. So with, a, with the basic RFA structure in mind, let's take a look at where we are in the program timeline. So the first set of U awards was made in December 2011. In 2013, we funded a CSER coordinating center to help facilitate the cross-consortium work. The fully integrated CSER was actually established in June 2013 when the second set of U awards were funded. The nine existing R awards were integrated and the NHGRI ClinSeq study was integrated. In 2014, we convened the CSER advisory panel. Of course, we're all here today in September um, because of this um, strategic planning and program review meeting. Looking ahead, in December, we're expecting to extend the phase one U grants to further CSER's impact in key areas and sync the two U grant phases in a time-limited way until a decision about a renewal has been made. If NHGRI decides to renew the CSER program, 
we would take a uh, concept clearance to NHGRI Council in spring or summer 2016 and um, um, schedule the review and award components to occur in sync with the ending of the phase one and phase two U awards in June 2017. So as I mentioned, the R awards have already ended, but of course we will have further discussion about the best way to ensure that adequate LC expertise is represented in any future um, CSER program or clinical sequencing program. Okay, so let me turn from the past to looking forward um, to, to thinking about CSER's future and um, share with you a number of high-level issues um, that we've been thinking about. So from the very beginning, CSER was organized around a consortium model with integrated, highly coordinated efforts, sort of represented by this beautiful, carefully plotted out um, garden here. Within CSER, we adopted this model in the U awards by requiring this three project structure, emphasizing participation in CSER wide working groups, and developing and collecting um, standardized metrics, which Katrina and the other um, CSER PIs have really focused a lot on in the past uh, 12 to 18 months or so. However, it's also true that when CSER was initially envisioned, the many flowers bloom approach was also fundamental. So within the basic project structure, investigators had the flexibility to refine their site's focus on clinical settings, the choice of research approaches, and site-specific expertise that could drive innovation in key areas. So we're not talking about hypothesis-free research necessarily, only that the hypotheses were specified by the individual sites and not necessarily across the whole consortium. So we'll continue to need a balance of both perspectives. So one critical piece of feedback for today is what is the value added a consortium, of, of a consortium? And NHGRI's experience with these coordinated organized networks, there has been value in being able to suggest best practices for the field, which can be challenging for the indiv individual investigators. However, there may be a point at which it is appropriate and desirable to move forward without such influence. So I think one open question for today is looking forward, where do we see the balance falling between these two approaches? I also want to take a look at the um, deliberate use of the word exploratory, which is the E in CSER. So in 2010, NHGRI, as, as Eric mentioned, was just beginning to establish a foothold in genomic medicine. And for this RFA, we were pleasantly surprised to find a robust response with the field being very ripe for research in this area. So as we embarked on this exploratory phase, so if you'll excuse me, the parallel with the Lewis and Clark expedition here, we equipped ourselves with a well-rounded set of resources. So Katrina mentioned many of these resources from the investigator perspective, but I also want to highlight the breadth of CSER interactions across NHGRI to build on what Terry and Eric have mentioned. So this is the NHGRI organizational chart with the extramural research program on the right and the other divisions on the left. Um, the CSER program actually touches on the Division of Genomics, Genome Sciences, the Division of Genomic Medicine, the Division of Genomics and Society, as well as our partners in the Division of Intramural Research. So it impacts quite a broad um, swath of NHGRI. As Eric mentioned, CSER is part of the G Genome Sequencing Program, um, all, of the, all of which um, the other programs have other trajectories. As Terry mentioned, CSER has sister programs in the Division of Genomic Medicine. And then our colleagues in the Division of Genomics and Society have been early partners um, integrating the R award sites that were existing at the time to, to really um, provide a rigorous LC partnership that goes beyond just having the LC investigators as consultants for human subjects. So across the NIH, we're also very thankful for our, our partnership with NCI and co-funding three awards and contributing scientific expertise. Okay, so having committed to going on this expedition, we knew there would be challenges and bottlenecks. We didn't know exactly where they were. Um, you'll hear um, today that the past almost four years of CSER have brought some mature projects to bear, as well as established a firm foothold from which to address unanswered questions. As we look back on our explorations, I think one of the questions we want to answer today is what have we learned from our explorations? I think um, this has um, come up already. What's, where should we go next? So um, open questions include what is the value of continuing to pursue a sort of exploratory emphasis versus a focus on defined hypotheses? If the exploratory focus is still of value to us, what is in scope and what bounds should be placed on the exploration? And then finally, what is the emphasis on the building the infrastructure and the process versus focusing on some defined end goal in the future? How will we know what we've accomplished, what we set out to do? Okay, so um, back to our task for today then. The goal is to come up with recommendations for NHGRI to consider in assessing future opportunities in clinical sequencing in the next five to 10 years. 
So I want to emphasize that we encourage you to actually um, give us recommendations, not, not just interest in a particular area, and to filter a bit based on what you've heard um, for what NHGRI's unique priori priorities would be. We will um, write up a workshop report, um, by the way, and, and include your feedback that we've heard today. Everyone has a role to play. We've invited a broad range of people, both within CSER and external to CSER. We've invited staff from NIH and across other federal agencies. So please participate actively in the discussion. We encourage moderators in particular to give everyone a chance to speak up. Um, one comment about, I think, how we should spend our time today. For this meeting, it would be very helpful for this group to focus on generating ideas and prioritizing recommendation about what NHGRI's role should be um, in, this, uh, in this space going forward. I think, um, as Eric mentioned, any program would likely go um, forth in, in sort of a resource-constrained setting. We obviously are dealing with a, um, a budget scenarios at this very day. But you know, for, for today, I think a stance of curiosity and enthusiasm for this area should outweigh any sort of resource or budget worries. So um, I would encourage you to be generous with your ideas and not be too constrained um, about the budget. Looking ahead to the agenda and to wrap up my talk, um, I want to point you ahead to the agenda. We've organized the meeting into six topic areas. Each topic is comprised of two talks, one from CSER and one from an external investigator, followed by a discussion co-moderated by two in individuals, one from CSER, one from an NHGRI advisor. Um, the concluding recommendations that we've heard during that session will be given by the NHGRI advisor. And then finally, at the end of the day, Carolyn and I will summarize the recommendations we've heard, and then um, Bob Nussbaum and Lucilla Ono Machado will conclude with fun one final moderated discussion. So we're really, really looking forward to getting your input. So before I turn it over to the first session topic, I'd like to acknowledge the contributions of many people today. Uh, the planning committee, Shanita, Deborah, Mary, and Dan, um, Alex and other folks from NHGRI, and Sandra Bromberg at Capital Consulting for Logistics. Um, our various NHGRI advisors from five different advisory groups have given us um, good wisdom and advice over the years. The CSER staff team from NHGRI and, and NCI um, have helped with the planning for this meeting and, and represent the program office along with myself. I'd like to thank NHGRI senior leadership and um, team sequence past and present for deciding that we needed to dedicate resources in this area. And of course, um, thank the CSER investigators for their um, uh, continued work in this area. In particular, we, we did a lot of asking to get people to um, give us information for the talks, background materials, and background paper, actually. So we hope that those will be of use um, to you for today. OK, so now I'd like to ask the first session participants to come up. Um, I believe that's, that's Heidi, um, Dan Roden, Dan Mazes, um, and Ian Krantz for the first topic session on um, a building an, um, an evidence base for healthcare systems. Okay, so you guys are here. Of course, um, sure. That's great. Oh, mm -hmm. Kathy Wickland. Um, I just, and for purposes of today, one of the gaps that I see is a population, the prenatal setting mm -hmm. in sequencing and, you know, there's certain tests that are coming on the pike for exome sequencing in a prenatal setting. Is that something that should be part of our discussion or something that CSER would be, it would be appropriate for this group to look at or is that something we should stay away from? So I'm going to give you an, an, a somewhat indirect answer which is that the NSITE program that Terry mentioned very briefly is focused on um, clinical sequencing and on I sequencing at least in the prenatal and, and, and newborn setting. Is it so prenatal that, or more newborn? Well, you know, I, I think I would I would say it's focused on um, prenatal and is, isn't it early? Um, I thought it's pretty much newborn. It's newborn. It's newborn. It's not renewed. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I think that's a good question to flag. I might suggest we raise it in maybe the clinical utility session where we'll have a chance to look at different um, dimensions. And Anastasia, do you have a really quick comment? Sorry. Y yeah, I can just say that Insight's focused on the newborn period, and so it's NICU healthy and sick infants. So okay. it's both of those settings, but it's all newborns, not prenatal. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying. Um, and I'm ready to turn it over to Heidi now. <laughs> 